Hello and welcome back to your only Aki's preview of this Friday night's game against Inverness. Let's talk though first about Morton. It was a, a good three points, uh, one we desperately needed, um, but I personally don't think it was a great performance. Uh, we'll get the guys' thoughts on that. So, Brandon, I suppose a good three points, but what did you make of the performance overall? It's a shy game, to be in all fairness. Both teams were rank rotten, um, but ultimately we got three points. Uh, usually, majority part of the season when both teams have been ranked rotten or it's been a shite game it's usually us coming out the worst of it and this time it's no we've got the three points so I I've read a few comments out about the game it's not been particularly pleasing the eye we've not really threatened them at all but ultimately they didn't do it with us and we're the team that's got the three points so that's all it really matters obviously they've been more pleasing if we did sort of turn up, we were creating chances and um, we did score a few more goals because I think if we, if we were better on our day then we would have took a couple of Martin because they certainly weren't at the stalls but you kind of really grumble because we've we've got the win but um, I, I definitely do think going into this week uh, games going forward we need a much better level of performance if we're wanting to battle it out and ensure our safety in the Championship. Absolutely and David the few times we did create chances, most of them came down that left-hand side uh, with Kai Kennedy and Keenan McDonald. How important were they? Obviously, they ended up not getting the assist, but they ended up being pivotal in that goal. Um, so how important were they and how important would they be going forward as well? I, I thought um, first half there was one instance that comes to mind where Kai Kennedy, he just he beat, I think, three or four men in one goal. There wasn't really options moving in front of him, so he'd take the ball back and then go again and take it around the men, and it just showed how comfortable he was taking men on, and that he could do that all day, but the movement around him just, it wasn't giving him any avenues to actually take the ball forward, and then it was quiet the rest of that first half, there, there wasn't really much um, kind of him taking men on, and then I said to you at half time that I felt that game was ours for the taking at that point, and I, I said I'd like to see us exploit the left hand more because to be fair, just this level of Scottish football, I've said that a million times that defences can't deal with men running at them. And Kai Kennedy's probably shown us already he's one of the best that's in our league at that. Um, and we did kind of utilise that a bit more. Um, and that's that's obviously got us a, a just rewards then. Um, like you said, with the way that the results have been going for us. I'd much rather be winning ugly than now than playing pretty football and, and getting the draws like we've been dominating and not getting it. So I'll take that now. But like Brandon said, though, we still need, it still was a nervy result. We need to be a lot more comfortable and a lot more confident because I'd said this to a couple of people um, that I work with in that in reflection of the game and it's going to sound stupid how I say it, but that was a really good effort for Lewis Spence. The ball comes out and he hits the first time that was all that won is that game. If he didn't take that, I know it's so stupid, like you say, if you didn't shoot, you wouldn't have scored, and if you didn't score, you wouldn't have won the game, but we should have been a lot more comfortable than just a really good effort on goal, because at the end of the day, if he didn't take that effort, we wouldn't have got the three points, and I just feel that we need to start being a lot more comfortable, because there wasn't much more clear-cut chances in the game, and we need to not... If we're winning one nil, it shouldn't be with the only chance of the game. We need to start being a lot more clinical. Um, so it's a perfect opportunity for that on Friday. Speaking of Lewis Spence, um, I actually think he spoke really well in the press afterwards. He was very honest about it. He said in the first half, they really struggled to break them down. And he, he also admitted the, the, the team were maybe a little bit lethargic with their passing. They could have been quicker. They could have tried going forward more. They were maybe a bit safe and looking to go sideways and backwards when in possession. Um, but he did also, he was also very honest about the second half. He thought they came out better. And, and I would agree with that. They looked, as you said, people like Kai Kennedy and uh, Marley Redfern and, and then Lewis Smith, when he came on, looked to take those players on as well. So I do think it was, I don't want to say a... Uh, a game of two halves, I don't think that's fair, but I would say we looked a lot more um, threatening in that second half, but it's also because the game opened up a lot more, so Morton started to push forward and that created space as well. So, But as you said, most importantly, it's the three points, and I would like to say that it then moves us ahead of Morton, but they've obviously went and won their game against Partick Thistle, so we remain in seventh, still got that little bit of a gap between us and Bomb, um, 
for us and kind of looked at it today and I think we get this the same difference in points from us and in Fermlin and us in Partick. So we're back in that kind of horrible middle ground of of a wee bit a wee bit of a gap uh, kind of between top and bottom. Um, but listen, a massive, massively important three points. Let's look ahead. About eighteen games in hand. About eighteen games in hand, though that's true. Uh, let's look ahead then to Friday night. Um, Inverness not on a good run of form at all without a win, and I think it was eight games. Um, really, really struggling now, but still in that kind of top four, uh, top five at least. So. Are we confident ahead of that game? You know, we're on a Stuart Taylor keeps saying this this good run. Um, but as we keep saying, it can't be a good run if you're not winning the games. So how are we feeling then ahead ahead of Friday night? I go back and forward for it. Like I've changed my mind about it every single day this week. Um because how many times have all these individually said when you read something like a team's no one in nine, the next thing you see in your head is enter Hamilton. Um, looking at it on paper I mean we're at home it's a Friday night they're probably travelling down on the day all that stuff we're on good form as they would say um, I wouldn't I would say well, <laughs> we won the last game which is better than, than drawing um, but we need to uh, for me that uh, this is a game we should be winning comfortably and I just don't see us doing it I don't want another nervy 90 minutes like that I would like to see us go. I mean, obviously I was thinking about it. The the team starting to establish itself a lot better. Where we know who our number one is. Uh, Joe Hilton's played a, a lot of games um, in concession now. You've got our back four, as you would say, completely established now with O'Reilly, Popescu, Hamilton and McDonald. Um, Lewis Spence, like I tweeted at the weekend, I feel that he's... That apart from his goal, that was the best performance I'd seen for him because I feel like he was one of the players that just maybe he was a five or six out of ten. He just kind of blended in the background, didn't want any spotlight on him, didn't do anything kind of good or bad. Um, I think if we can get him and Scott Martin in the middle of part backs, those positions established, um, we just need to start doing that further up the park because, like we were when we were in the SPL, it's usually the later end. In the season we start establishing our strongest team and start actually performing and this is exactly what I want to avoid this season I want it to be organised but um, we should be a team in turmoil like Inverness seem to be in recent form don't get me wrong they're still having a, a better season than us um, but we need to to kind of exploit that and I, I hope we will I think what you said is sort of spot on with regards to it's getting to this stage of the season where we have sort of established more or less what a sort of first 11 is, should give or take, um, and whatnot, they will obviously get replaced. And it's frustrating because it's something we go, we go in about constantly year after year. If we are to believe what Stan's saying, and he's sort of, he's always thinking ahead. And he's always thinking to transfer in their head. Hopefully that does mean that they'll be getting the sort of foundations in place for next season. And it will be different to the past seasons because I think it just shows you if when you do have sort of that bit of stability, especially in this division, um, I think we are showing with the results that we're getting all these draws that we are we're missing a striker. Mm. If we had that striker and we had that ruthless and clinical person up top then we certainly wouldn't be where we are just now so if we're going to next season getting that sorted and having the sort of foundations in place of the other players that we're already got just now then we'll be far better prepared and we're not going to take four or five months to kick on and start getting the results and getting that bit of consistency which although we're not getting the wins then we are sort of we have stabilised High, uh, stabilised the past couple of months since rankings came in um, it's just the level of standard of this league isn't particularly that good and you just it's, it's been fine margins where we've not took our chances and we've not scored where ultimately has got us in the position where we are just now and like you said Ben we're only a couple of we're not that far away for the teams ahead of us but I, I just think we should get ahead of ourselves we're in the position we're in for, the, um, for a reason and we should be ensuring our safety rather than looking to the teams above us they're, they're no means out with touching distance but um, 
no, we we just need to keep taking each game by each game and uh, getting the uh, hopefully getting the victories and turning these draws into wins. And like David says, Inverness are on a bit of a um, the fans seem to be on the managers um, the managers head quite a bit just now. Don't think they were particularly happy with some things that happened in January. And I, it's it's a good time to play them and hopefully we can capitalise and continue this unbeaten run if you want to call it that um, even though it's like seven draws two wins or something <laughs> um, but I you know, hopefully we go into this with a bit of confidence um, we play better football than we did on Saturday there and um, yeah it's, it's one of the ones we don't want to be too we don't want to be confident because we know what always happens when we're confident but at, at the end of the day consistency has sort of improved and We've shown that we're capable. We've beat them twice already. So I'd like to think we could win this game. And if we take it with the right attitude, then I don't see why we couldn't. Because um, it's a good time to play a team that's uh, on a downward slope and they don't seem to be changing. But uh, the old saying goes, upstep Hamilton Ackies. But hopefully that's uh, forgotten about and we can get two wins in a row. Because um, uh, it's been a while since that's happened when we've got two in the bounce. Well, there's two players that it looks like we'll be out with, um, with without, sorry. Um, that's obviously Andy Ryan, who wasn't in the squad uh, for Morton, and then it was announced on Aki's Twitter that, um, yes, he is injured. So um, there's a rumour going about that he could be out for a few weeks, so we could be without him, obviously, for a while. And then, obviously, Jamie Hamilton as well, who was taken off against Morton. And um, Stan says that he felt uh, a pop in his groin, so um, he says they're still looking at that. Don't know if that's um, improved at all, obviously. But if it is, it means Stevie Lawson then gets his, his full debut. I'm interested what you guys thought of Stevie Lawson coming on because I'll give my personal opinion first. I thought he was rank rotten uh, in that first half. Um, I do agree with, with, with what Stan said in the press, though, afterwards. <laughs> um, he was coming into the game. It maybe took him a while to get settled in it. I think he was trying to do things um which maybe he wasn't ready for. I think he tried 15 nutmegs in the first the first half that never came off. But um I think once he gets settled he did have a much better second half uh, in all seriousness. So I would be interested to see kind of now he's in the team what he can do. Um should he start? What did you guys make of Stevie Lawson's uh Stevie Lawson's debut? I think um I was just laughing the people I was sitting beside had a sort of method of as you can probably imagine. Um, but you've sort of hit it in the nail. Um, we have to remember he's not played in some amount of months. He's obviously, he has been training with clubs and whatnot, but there's a difference to be sort of running about a park or actually playing playing a, a full, full on game. Um, you could tell he hadn't played a game in a while. Um, with that first half, he was a bit like a, a deer in the headlights, is probably the best way for it. Um, but Fair play to him. Uh, in my opinion, he massively turned it around in the second half. And he obviously, I don't know if Stan Rankin, whoever has got in at half time and just sort of told him to calm the fuck down. Um, <laughs> which, um, he ultimately needed to be told. And he did, he came into the game and you, you did see that there, there, there obviously is a player in there that the lovely fans have talked to us about. Um, so, no, um, if Jamie Hamilton's injured, I think you, you do need to go with him because he does show he's capable of being a good player. He obviously we wouldn't have played at the standard with Levy for so many times if he wasn't a decent player. And, yeah, he just uh, he needs to calm down and stop these nutmegs because um, uh, he was getting everybody's heart rate a bit up that first, I think. And, David, you were talking just before about Andy Ryan. Um, the rumour is, we don't know, obviously, for sure anything with Aki's, but the rumour is... He could be out for a few weeks. Um, the rumor, I don't know. Do, do you know the reasoning behind the rumor? Apparently, just that he was injured. Apparently, he'd done it five sides for his pals. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if that's true or no. That's uh, what, that's what was getting passed about the stadium. You know what Chinese whispers can be like. So it could it could be absolute nonsense. But apparently, uh, I uh, playing five for his pals, and he's uh, I don't know if he's growing or what. No, and he's out for six weeks. Is what's the uh, thing? It's going about. Fingers crossed. That's not true, but. Yeah, I don't know. Either way, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be without Andy Ryan. It seems for the next few weeks, um, which means David Moyle is gonna have to step up. We've talked a lot about David Moyle, um, and I think to be fair to him, he was probably the hardest working player on Saturday. Um, so isolated 
up front, which we've spoke about um, a lot, Brandon, me and you on the podcast as well, about how isolated he is, especially when obviously we only play the one up top. But I think credit to him, he's not a goal scorer, but he was the hardest working player, I think, on that team uh, on Saturday. But he needs those creative players around him to start chipping in more. So he needs your Redferns, your Smiths, your Kennedys, etc., um, to start chipping in because, as I've said, he's not going to be the one that's... that's, that's what. That's why, in my opinion, yes, he's not the greatest of players. Yes, he's not the, the goal scorer that we badly need. He's not the person that, if we did have him, it would be far higher than what we are. If you have someone up top with him because he's worked great mm-hmm. and he just he, he is non-stop, mm-hmm. he's going to be successful in this league if you have someone up top with him because his work rate is clearly always there that the other person can just feed off that. And we've shown each time that we do play him up top with someone, it's worked in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So I he does get a lot of slack and I, I completely understand why he gets the slack because a striker's main objective is to score goals, which he ultimately doesn't do to the standard which we should be expecting. But if he's got someone up top with him, it's proved that it's been successful. And it, as you've explained there, the reason why it's successful has been just down his work rate. So I think it's very important that we have someone up top with him. If not, the players that are in these positions and in the setup that Stan wants to play need to get far more forward and nearer them. Hopefully that's the case on Friday. Well, here's a question for you then. Would you play Andy Winter up top with him against Inverness then? Uh, on Saturday? I have a funny feeling that's where David... Right on right 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's go to David then for that. David, um, is, is that what you would do? Would you play Andy Winter up top with him? Uh, uh, that's not what I went for. Well... What I've went for is probably what I think the manager will go for as well. Okay. Um, so obviously, listening to Brandon's points, I would go with uh, two up top with Andy Winter. But I think the changes, I think he'll go for it. It'll be Hilton and Goals, Lawson, O'Reilly, Papescu and McDonald. If he's fit, it'll be Spence and Martin in the middle with Mullen. Um, Kai Kennedy, I think he'll go with Lewis Smith. Yep, so that. I think Red Firm was just it just kind of ran a bit like a headless chicken for me. When he was there, he was just a load of energy. He didn't really contribute anything to the game. I think when Lewis came on, again, I don't mean to sound harsh with what I've seen, but you see it's like the difference in quality between him and Kai Kennedy when they're the, kind of all about the same kind of game. But one's just at a much higher calibre than the other. Um, like ball retention and taking men on and confidence as well. Whereas when Lewis came on, there's a couple of times where he'll receive the ball and spill it and then foul his man, try to get it back. And the effort is, is always there with him. But there is just maybe that difference in calibre with the pair. Um, reading a lot about Inverness there, their frailties are defence. So like I said... Most teams in this country cannot deal with men running at them. We get two men that can do that. Um, so I would like to see that. And then Moyo up top. Again, physical nuisance. Get yourself about and like Brandon said, get the two wide men further up as well. Because there was a couple, of, there was one chance that rung in mind in for the weekend where um, Moyo takes the ball to the byline and whips it backwards. And if someone is reading that, and they, it's basically they're running on to an open goal. Um, but the defender got there first. But like I say, we didn't really have anyone anywhere near the ball to get there. Um, so I think that's something we need to improve on. But that's what I think. I'd be surprised if I, I didn't get maybe nine out of 11 there right. Maybe nine or ten. I think, um, interesting. I, I completely agree that you'll be right with that. will be the starting, up, starting 11. I think... Um, what I noticed on Saturday was, which I was pretty surprised about, was that Spence was actually getting further forward from the central than Mullen was, which yeah. I, I just don't understand it because Mullen, when we signed him, all of us were, were thinking we were signing a forward slash winger, um, right. attack-minded player. But the reason in which we feel, and we, we've talked about so much, is that we think that he's getting played in that central role because because he's a decent level of player, they trust him more in that position than they have the other people that they've got. But now we've got Spence, 
who I'm still not 100% uh, convinced by, um, but he did play well on Saturday. And we get Scott Martin back. Surely that then allows you to uh, allows you to make Josh Mullen get far, far closer to Moyo. So in a four-two-three-one yes. formation, if he's wanting to stick with with, with the setup that he always goes from the four-three-three, surely you go for the four-two because you know what Spence and Martin are going to give in that though. They're going to they're going to dig in and they're going to act as a barrier so it should be that sort of leeway to sort of allow one of the other central players to get far further forward and with Josh Mullins capabilities which he's, he showed with Levy in the past and he showed in some of the games where he has been given the, the freedom to go far, further forward we need Moyo to have support regardless and if they're not going to play too up top we need one of the central players along with the wingers to get very close to him so I think with what you said is spot on David I think that's what we'll go for and I'd like to hope that they give um, they give Josh Mullen the freedom uh, to get much further forward um, because I think he'll offer good support to Moyo and as you've talked about Inverness's problems come from their defence and if we're, if we're going with a striker that's completely isolated, then we're completely missing the trick, eh, targeting eh, the opposition where they're weakest, and that's what we need to do if we want to get the win. Right. One, one more thing before we get our, our score predictions in is um, I don't know if you guys saw the post from We Are Hamilton on Twitter sharing the video of the of the Aki's goal and pointing out um, Captain Popescu. Um, been performing very, very well, created a good good partnership with Daniel O'Reilly and plenty of chat of hopefully Aki's at least looking at it right now but getting him permanently, giving his heart deal. Um, his heart still expires in the summer. Uh, David, what have you made of Pescu um, since he's came in and would you like to see him sign permanently? Oh, aye, 100%. I think he's, um, he's one of those players that we fell for just surely for his passion. He's, he's very hot on the sleeve and there's a couple of times, especially in that first half where, and this isn't a criticism in any way, but he took a fair few risks. Mm-hmm. Where he's like, and I remember he doing, uh, him doing this on his debut, but like he's got like the last man pressure on him and he'll try and do like a turn and to be all fairness to him, it pays off. Like he's not had any like issues with it, but there's a couple of times where that's just no good for the nerves watching but he's obviously got that kind of maybe a bit more class about him where he, he will do that I'm, I'm not a big fan of taking the risks if we can avoid it but I think he's been a really good uh, signing I think that him getting the captaincy and this might all play into our favour him maybe wanting to come apparently um, it just depends I suppose finances and things like that when you look at a deal that he would have been on it Hearts, and then you've got to look going forward. But I'd love to see his sign him. I think him and O'Reilly have been brilliant. Um, and it's, I was surprised because it was a position that at the start of the year you couldn't have talked to me out of Sean Want and Jamie Hamilton. Um, but I don't know how they two would get in ahead of they two at the back at the moment. Um, so I'm surprised. And that speaks volumes of how highly they've played, especially considering that O'Reilly's only been in two months so no I, I'm really happy with both of them but um, I'd love to see Popescu sign um, I think it would be nice to go in with another player who's got captain potential because it's something we feel we've really been lacking this whole season um, and he has stepped up so no I, hopefully common sense surely we're having discussions tonight so well, you'd say that, but <laughs> Robin um, doesn't run right for Aki's. I think, uh, I, I don't know if it was, I can't really remember, baby, but then I, know, I can't remember if it was you I was talking to at half time about sort of Popescu uh, and O'Reilly, and I talked to a few people about it. See, I saw him mean, O'Reilly for a large part of the first half, and see just, and even the early se- stages of the second half, and see just watching them communicate to each other. They've Obviously, we've, we've heard about the leadership qualities of O'Reilly since he's came in. Um, and Popescu has been given the captain a, a captaincy for, for a reason. Both of them are constantly talking. When he initially signed at Aki's, um, the fans sort of 
start got got a good liking to him just for his sheer passion. But now, since O'Reilly's came in, haven't they two have created a really strong partnership in my opinion? Um, they're constantly talking, uh, and we're not leaking that many goals. We we both of them together. It's something that. No, in no means am I comparing them to Ellie Burton and Lawton, but within the within the sort of podcast we talked about, they talked about Ellie Bert talked about um, how that level of sort of communication, how creating that rocket defence was so pivotal for them when they get promoted, and the fact that we brought Ellie in, he's only had sort of the past um, sort of month with herself, and then Papescu who who hasn't played. I deal that deal a lot more than early start of the season. They've they've created this partnership that would just be so stupid to mm-hmm. they're both at a fairly decent age. They're, they're, they're not old, um, but they've got the leadership qualities and they've created a very strong partnership. Surely you'd have to think common sense would prevail. Aki's fans clearly love Popescu. Popescu looks as if he actually loves Aki's fans. That that celebration says it all to me. You can see when he's during the games, just that he's sort of on the same wavelength as Zaki's fans when it comes to sort of winding up the opposition teams. He seems to just get it, if you want to get it. Um, so I just think it makes complete sense. And you'd like to think that Stan's, given having the captain say as a sort of thing, like, like look, I've, I completely believe in you. If you, this is my plan of action. I do believe that we can, next season, if we stay in the league, we can go and push for promotion we're not far off it and once I get the players that I want in I think we'll get we'll push for it and you're you're going to be crucial to that happening alongside Dan so you'd like to think common sense will prevail and they would think logically about it all but as you say it's, it's Aki's we're dealing with and that doesn't always prevail so fingers crossed we do sign Popescu and I just um, I think I think we all speak for every Aki's fan when we think that it would make a very good uh, statement of intent from the board and it shows that they're planning and preparation for a season ahead, which they don't ultimately do. As like you a- said, if if I'm looking under a microscope, as something you said earlier, Stan said several times about it, how he's planning for the season ahead. So if I'm if I'm Stan and I'm planning for the season ahead and I'm giving my armband to someone and I have Danny O'Reilly in the team, I'd be giving it to someone saying, listen, this is yours. I want you to take the most of this role and see that going forward. I wouldn't be doing it to somebody who's going to fuck off back to Edinburgh at the end of the season or isn't going to be. So if I'm getting the armband to somebody, I would be giving it to O'Reilly then if you're my long-term option. That's how I see it. So if he's doing that, then surely there is positive signs in there with Popescu and maybe there is a lot more happening. You know what Aki's are like, way. You'd like to think so, and it would all... Right. It make all Very easily see the Because right. uh, at the same time, it's the Bruce Anderson effect I've seen a million times. Whoever comes down for the SPL is rebuilding their squad. They'll want cheap options. <clears throat> if they can offer a tenner more than us for somebody who's been one of maybe the better centre halves in the league, they'll do it and he'll choose them. So it's, you can see it going either way. Let's just hope it goes in their favour for a change. Well, it's just not penny pinch and do the logical thing for a change if we actually <laughs> plan appropriately, but we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. Well, let's get our score predictions then to wrap this up. Um, uh, I don't know. I, I kind of I, I predicted a draw against Morton um, because I thought obviously Morton coming in in great form. Um, I would like to think we can hopefully carry that that kind of attitude um, into Inverness, and as as we've said before in in this episode. Um, Inverness not a great run of form, so I'm actually going to going to go on a limb, and I'm going to say Aki's will win this one nil. I'll um, I'll kind of continue the positivity. The last two games now, um, I said this in the preview after the Abroad game that it felt that we had been prepared for that game. We had a, a game plan to address the way Abroad played. Looking in hindsight, it wasn't the prettiest game against Morton, but that was a game I feel we were still prepared for because we really didn't let them kind of build anything, have any momentum, any I didn't see any style of play from them. Um, so I'll give us our juice for that. It feels like we've been prepared for the games. And like Brandon said, instead of trying to go and do our thing all the time, you've got to try to stop them doing theirs as well. So I think we'll be prepared for this as well. I'd like to see start 
brightly. I'd love to see us go in with a 2 0 lead at half time and see the game out in the second half instead of having to chase something or watch something. So um, I'm going to go for, for a 2 0 win. I'm going to ruin the. I knew you were going to do that. <laughs> I'm not going to completely ruin it. I'm not going to go for another nice defeat. I just think, um, I they've been poor, but. I just, you know, I don't like the system. I just feel like we've got far more capabilities that we can be doing better and we could be threatening teams more. And I just, I'm a bit, I'm a bit worried that we're going to go with um, the setup which we usually go. And I think Moyo's going to be isolated up top his cell. And I don't think um, we're going to have the support that we need when we should ultimately be pressing him a lot more. But saying that, I, I don't think Inverness are particularly that decent at the moment. I don't think... Um, they'll threaten us that much but I'm going to go with a one each um, I think we have the capabilities of easily winning this game and if we take it to them in the right, right manner we will beat them um, but I just think we've got consistency of winning the now um, unfortunately so I'm going to go for a draw but um, I hope I'm completely wrong and I'll certainly hold my hands up when we do win all right, well, as always, if you go onto our Twitter uh, just before the game on Friday, you will see the tweet for you to put your score predictions in to be involved in our league table. As always, thank you very much for watching and we will see you after the game.